I call the East Brunswick Township Council agenda action meeting for June 24, 2019 to order. Please everybody rise for the Pledge of Allegiance and a moment of silence. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, and indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you. Ms. Perry, please call the roll. Councilman McAvoy? Here. Councilman Spadafino? Here. Councilwoman Sullivan? Here. Councilman Wendell? Here. Council President Stanley? Here. Adequate notice of this meeting has been provided as required under Chapter 231, Public Laws 1975, specifying the time, date, and location to, and to the extent known the agenda by posting a copy on the Municipal Building Public Notice Bulletin Board located in the main lobby, providing a copy to the Home News Tribune and Sentinel newspapers, posting a copy on the Township's website, and by filing a copy in the Office of the Township Clerk in accordance with the certification which will be entered in the minutes. Thank you. Tonight to start off, I'd like to call up our Executive Director for the Redevelopment Agency, Mr. Michael Hughes, to come up and give an update to the Council. Sure. Council President, uh, Mr. Mayor, members of Council, I appreciate you uh, giving me an opportunity this evening to update uh, both you all and members of the general public uh, with respect to redevelopment here in the township. Uh, last I was here five weeks ago, presented an overview um, and tried to just capsule out some of what we've been able to do in the first five months of the redevelopment agency, went over the different bodies that have jurisdiction over it, and then the scope of each of their tasks. Uh, tonight, I plan on providing an update of the last five weeks, uh, which have seen actually a, a great deal of movement. Uh, with respect to the properties I'll go over, I'll start with the sites that you're going to see or take action on the soonest, and then I will go go from there chronologically. Uh, first is 39 Edgeboro Road, which we went over uh, the concept plan at last council meeting. So there's a financial agreement uh, on the docket for tonight's agenda, I believe, in front of you all, uh, that I know that Township Attorney Baker has been negotiating and working on, and I think he's going to be providing an update to the specifics of that when that that ordinance appears on your agenda. Um, with that, the township will hope to execute, uh, I believe, the financial agreement. Um, and then I know that the property owners uh, of that site have a very aggressive construction schedule. And you know they were looking to get started probably yesterday, so that you're going to see movement on very, very quickly. Uh, next is the 110 Tice's property. Um, that has been the that has been the nexus of a lot of movement and momentum in the last five weeks. Uh, we expect site plans to be done and turned in on that site uh, probably within the next 15 to 18 days, I'm going to say. Um, we're hoping for an August meeting at the planning board level. Some of the delay in that from the last council meeting uh, to now is just some wetlands mitigation and some regulatory requirements uh, that are going to be installed in the uh, upper right hand corner of the property if you're looking at it from Tice's Lane. Uh, there was originally going to be a detention basin. They've got to do some other regulatory work and, and install some underground systems there because of the wetlands designation. Um, with that though, I, I am happy to report that there was a, a piece of land that was going to be deeded back to the township that would total around six acres um, as a result of meetings going over some of their changes to the site plan and with respect to a potential redevelopment agreement. I'm happy to report that that's turned from six acres to a to eight and change, honestly, about eight and a quarter right now uh, at the 110 Tice's property. Uh, th now, also, while they're going to submit their site plans in the next 15 to 18 days, we're aiming for an August planning board hearing. What, what happens in between and the reason for that lag time is for our township engineering uh, staff and consultants mm -hmm. to go over the uh, to go over their plan and ensure uh, conformance with all codes, regulations, and mm -hmm. with the redevelopment plan that's in effect at that property. And then as well, we're also going to need our township redevelopment planner, uh, Fran Reiner from DMR Architects, to take a look at the site plan for that and to ensure its consistency with the redevelopment plan that was passed by council and the planning board. 
Uh, next is the Ace Auto Records property on Hearts Lane. Uh, that's being studied as we speak by the aforementioned uh, township planner from DMR Architects. That study uh, should be at planning board level shortly. I don't have their schedule off of the top of my head, but I would expect that right around the same time as 110 Tice is hearing, maybe even the meeting before. Uh, then we get to areas 2A and 3A, which I know are, are the most talked about here. Uh, we have meetings every three weeks to go over a potential redevelopment agreement uh, with the conditional redeveloper of that site. Uh, the 90 days of exclusivity is wearing down, and I, I think probably at, at this week or last week, that 90-day window had, had closed. We still have every indication to continue negotiating in good faith with them, and, and this is a third of a billion dollar uh, project. So it's, it's very complex. There's a lot of moving parts. I'm happy to report that there's a lot of areas of agreement. Um, some outstanding issues that I know the township has on their plate, we want to make sure that there is an established benchmark uh, of deliverables and progress reports that will come to council and come to the redevelopment agency so you have from the developer um, what their status is in, the, in a public document. Uh, secondarily, we have you know, questions and want to make sure the township is protected uh, at the phasing perspective of any potential development going on there. There's also a, a strong desire from the township's perspective to put an end to the litigation that's on some of the properties there. So we want to make sure that's rectified in the redevelopment agreement and we have a clear strategy with the developer moving forward. Uh, and then lastly, we continue to pass around uh, updated copies of the renderings and master plans for that site comments are received by the redevelopment agency uh, on a weekly basis from committee members. We just had another pass through last Monday. We have another meeting with the redeveloper and the redeveloper's attorney occurring on Thursday of this week. Um, and so that, that'll move forward. I would be remiss if I didn't mention with the 110 Tysis property while I was going over some procedural things in the timeline. Um, demolition, the indoor demolition, I, I reported on last meeting would be beginning soon. I'm happy to report that that's completed. All the indoor demo is completely done at 110. The outdoor demolition at 110 Tysis uh, is actually beginning this week. Um, you'll see the there's some equipment already on the site and they'll be trucking some more in and then the claw will be there taking down that building. That'll be about a two to three week uh, demolition process. There's still a little bit of abatement that has to be done during demolition. So it's not you know a, a site that you can really have easy access to see, but you'll definitely see passing on Tice's Lane um, that that building is going to be down. I won't say by your next council meeting, but certainly two council meetings from now that that building will no longer exist. Um, and if I just sure. want to clarify, it'll be on the ground in a big pile of rubble. Yeah. It probably will take the better part of a couple of months to clean the entire site and dig out all the foundations and everything else, mm -hmm. but you'll see drastic changes on that site over the next two to three weeks yeah and, and some of that is just some of the machinery that was on, that was in that site i mean the foundations of those machines goes mm -hmm. six to eight feet in the ground over there from when it was from when it was built so it's a heavy heavy demolition job uh but the outdoor structure of the building will be will be gone before you know it um so i think i've gone over the the main four redevelopment areas um to give you a sense of the path ahead, it's obviously our top priorities, again, a redevelopers agreement done and complete with 110 Tices now that we have their confirmed site plan. Essentially, they're cleaning some stuff up before they submit to planning board. Those conversations in earnest take place every two weeks with their attorneys and our redevelopment agency staff and attorneys. Uh, same goes with River. We're on every two week schedule turning back copies of the redevelopers agreement to get that uh, squared away. And then, you know, from a redevelopment agency perspective, we want to just increase uh, our website. We want to get a more interactive portal where residents and, and even, you know, elected officials can see the progress a little more clearly. We can put some of my PowerPoints up on the site um, and have, you know, we're very good at, I think, a lot of high-touch methods of outreach. We host, I know the mayor hosts town halls. We had a facilitated workshop over at the Community Arts Center. We want to pair some of those high-touch methods with high tech and I shouldn't really even call a website high tech <laughs> but we want to we want to have a repository where if someone you know has an inkling to do some desktop research at three in the morning they can get some information at the East Brunswick website 
Um, with that, I will stop my portion and I'll entertain questions uh, from council members or I'll let Mayor Cohen uh, have something to say. <laughs> well, first I want to thank you as always to keep us all updated on what's going on with redevelopment. It's a, fortunately, it's a moving process and each time you come here there is movement and that's important. But two things that also occurred in the last uh, really couple weeks that I think are worth noting and, and one of the main things you wanted to accomplish with redevelopment besides just redeveloping properties that are fallen into disrepair uh, is to stimulate the idea that that as you improve um, the, the product that's on Route 18 that it would hopefully work as a snowball for other properties and so recently this week we had uh, the owners of Sunny Palace come in to the office and they're looking to do something with their property and they'd actually like to and will be meeting with the redevelopment agency in order to see if through redevelopment and through the laws and the um, uh, opportunities that are available through that mechanism that maybe they could do something to upgrade that property and so if we start seeing and that's before we've done anything um, but that was the point. Once you start seeing improvement, uh, improvement begets more improvement. And so the goal is to go to the highest common denominator on the highway and not to the to the lowest. So uh, without doing anything to see that that's already started is, is a good sign that we're in the right direction. And, uh, and just an interesting point that I have heard from um, realtor friends in the community, and that is that... Uh, there's pretty much a halt on sales in Crosspoint right now wow. because most people that live there um, are recognizing that the likelihood of the community around it um, being upgraded has actually caused them to halt any sales. You can't find anything there because most people there believe that the values of their properties are actually going to go up. So that's a, those are all good signs. Yes. Anyone else on council? Have any questions? Council and Sullivan? I just have one question. The uh, 2A and 3A sites, mm -hmm. I know a lot of residents are anxious for it to start. And I know when it, after it goes through everything and they sign the agreement and we're ready to go, when can you, when do you think the first, I know you have to, when will you think the first demolition will be? I mean, I'm not. No one's holding you to it, but that's what the residents are anxious about. And Jim, you want to? You want to me to yeah, just, I'll speak from experience on this side, not from mm -hmm. uh, what actually the developers said to us. But my expectation is that that you'll see demolition occur before you see uh, a lot of mo work moving forward. Uh, but as we call it, it's addition by subtraction in our in our business. Taking down bad assets is better than having bad assets sure. sitting there. Um, my expectation is that the developer, once we ha come to an agreement, will be under contract on the properties at least in the 3A section, in prob ideally within a six-month period of time, and be looking to demo them properties uh, immediately once he takes possession of them. Um, I think our expectation yeah. is that we'll, we would expect to see some some progress in in a you know not in a demolition fashion but in a productive standpoint mm -hmm. where they're they're starting to put work in the ground uh probably springtime next year okay. yeah and i would say the difference to to dovetail on jim's point is where you know with the 110 tysis property you know demolition is a real sign of things to come there the engineering work's been complete for that side in, in terms of the design um and there was tenants in that building I mean there there was not that building wasn't completely vacant um, so I, I would say that demolition would probably occur sooner rather than later but I would caution reading too much into that because those buildings are vacant there's no sense really from a developer standpoint in keeping you know a structure that that might de be deemed unsafe in some instances mm -hmm. standing up so they'll there'll be a, an impetus to get them down but there's still going to need to be engineering and design work that would go into those properties where 110 is kind of the reverse of that Okay, thank you. Councilman. Uh, thank you, Mr. Hughes, for that thorough thank you. review, because it, it, uh, it covered my questions, <laughs> as always. However, uh, <coughs> with regard to 110 Tices, the, yes. the owner of that property is the developer? Yes. And has that owner signed on as a legal developer versus an unconditional developer? Well, they were conditionally designated by the council 
they might have, I believe back in 2000 and actually 18 at the end of 2018 so their 90 day window had right. actually closed we continued to negotiate in good faith um, and we're reaching a point now where we think we're relatively close to to having them sign so w once once that once that is signed on the solid line <laughs> we talked about at our last meeting um, and you have a bona fide uh, developer, that's when the August date of uh, an actual plan will be submitted? Uh, we're trying to move on parallel tracks as, as much as we can. Um, my, my dream scenario would have that redevelopment agreement be signed prior to the planning board hearing. But I think we're going to try to get that in front of the planning board before the redevelopment agreement signed, if we can. And when I've looked at uh, the redevelopment agencies architectural design of that property that mm -hmm. could be radically altered by the developer uh, anything's possible but I can tell you that we've had meetings with the developer yeah. and they don't plan on seeking uh, any bulk variances uh, there there's one issue with a very small setback where we're talking about going from 25 to 24 um, you know something very minor like that but in terms of the overall aesthetic and the plan and the vision that's in that redevelopment plan um, in all of our meetings with 110 Tices mm -hmm. and Garden Homes, the, the conditional redeveloper for that site, we've expressed um, somewhat of an inflexibility to pass bulk variances or a ton of variances at the land use mm -hmm. level to radically alter that redevelopment plan. They've signed on and they've been on board every single one of our meetings and, and, and renderings they've said to us. Uh, it consistently goes with the vision of the redevelopment plan and the overall aesthetic mm -hmm. and look that was passed and agreed upon by this governing body and the planning board. And that's in and around 500 units? Yes. Okay. Uh, with regard to uh, ACE Auto, that plan has not been submitted yet either to the, plan, to the planning board? That plan is not. You know, the first step is having the study uh, re-examined by the township redevelopment planner to make sure that that area fits within the strictures of redevelopment law to be classified as an area in need of redevelopment. You know, to the layperson, it's it's very it, very obvious that it probably would, but we've got to go through the through the you know the planning level for that. And then after that, uh, once a designation is made, we act upon the planner's uh, recommendations and findings. Then we would begin to examine a, a plan for that property at the land use level. And with regard to 2A and 3A, again, a conditional developer. Uh -huh. um, again, your professionalism. No red flags have gone up that say that they're not going to go from conditional developer to developer. Uh, no, I mean, I'm always hesitant to say there could be a red flag at the 11th hour. I mean, there were when I was counsel on a number of uh, on a number of things. So I, I will remain cautiously optimistic on everything. I think the plan that was acted upon by the redevelopment agency um, is very solid, very defensible. And I have every expectation that they will be sticking to that. Because once that conditional developer becomes a developer, then with regard to questions from neighbors, I mean, it'll be full steam ahead. Uh, for sure, and that's why, you know, it's time, it takes a little time to go through it in a thoughtful, I think, deliberative process. Thank you very much, Mr. Hughes. Yeah. Council President. If I may, uh, just to kind of piggyback on a few things um, that uh, Councilman McAvoy mentioned, um, and just to give you some assurances, as far as 110 Tysis, every meeting we've had um, with that developer uh, comes back to the fact that we wrote a very, very strong and defensible and tight redevelopment plan that was passed by this governing body uh, several months ago, if not a year ago. And, and to that point, um, some of the things that are taking a little bit more time are the fact that this developer is now reading the fine print, per se and realizing that he's got to make space for charging stations and he's got to make space for uh, Uber and Lyft pickup areas and, and those types of things that were written into that redevelopment plan. So, so it's caused him to tweak his plan a little bit, but the overall plan has not really changed from anything that was presented to us that is at all markedly different from what was proposed originally. Everything that's on there has only changed slightly. Everything's not changed slightly, but the, the changes on there are slight. 
um, and nothing that that changes the the overall uh, design or impact of that that plan as it was originally proposed to this agency with the original redevelopment plan. So I mean, I'm happy for the consistency. I'm happy that the uh, the developer is now seeing the finer points of this plan and and making certain that he meets all the criteria of the redevelopment plan. We've we've spoken in in several meetings about not wanting any variances when this. Uh, plan comes before the planning board. And those variances are variances from the redevelopment plan, not variances, you know, in a grand scheme of things, but what would he be, re be requesting a, a variance from in regard to the redevelopment plan? And as, as uh, Mr. Hughes indicated, they're going to be very, very minor and few. Um, so, so it should be something that emulates and exactly, you know, represents what was approved by the planning board the redevelopment agency and this governing body. So uh, I'm happy that that plan's moving forward. The only the only changes are he's deeding more property to the town. That's one of the big changes. So and and, and if I may, Councilman Wendell, if there are changes which we we saw with the Summerhill once when when Summerhill mm -hmm. was finalized and I do believe the number was 72 changes that 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 takes time and if that takes time mr hughes that's great so if you have tweaks and modifications and things that you want that you know the community wants and therefore sends it back to us for approval so be it sure that's the beauty of you know we we spent a lot of time in the beginning on a lot of these things and i think we're getting it right um and I, I'd just like to thank Mr. Hughes for, for all the time he's put in in the past six months since he stepped into this role. Um, makes my life easier, and, and I appreciate that. Um, you know, being the boots on the ground, the, the guy who's paying the neck to every one of these developers, calling them on, an every, on a daily basis, I, I thank you for your time. Uh, that's, that's a role I play quite well. <laughs> As I know. Yeah. <laughs> thank you. Any other questions? All right. Thank you. I, thank you. Thank you very it. much. And Appreciate if I may say, congratulations. Oh, thank on, you. On your, <laughs> thank uh, you. Mr. Hughes is going to be a father. I appreciate yeah, that. He's got thank a little baby boy much. coming at the end of the year. Thank you. Tax right for the end of the now year. it's public. Yeah, well, Beyond Facebook. Yeah, great. <laughs> Additional tax break? <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> <laughs> right. Thank you, Michael. Uh, moving on to the public hearing, can I get a motion for Ordinance 19-17? of the Township of East Brunswick County of Middlesex, State of New Jersey, amending Chapter 75 of the Township Code of the Township of East Brunswick entitled Construction Codes, Uniform Fees, Section 75-3, Fee, Disposition of Monies. Motion adopted. Motion by Councilman Wendell. Can second. I get a second by Councilwoman Sullivan. I want to open this to the public. If anyone from the public have anything to state regarding this ordinance and this ordinance only, Please come forward. Seeing none, closing the public portion. Any discussion on council? Councilman Linda, I mean, Councilman McAvoy? Sorry. I know there's a couple of good looking guys. Okay. <laughs> there's this difference, though. I guess we all look the same sitting down. This, this is a, an ordinance that we had a lengthy discussion about uh, at our last, last meeting. Yes. Um, I recall Councilman Spadafino reviewing this thoroughly. And um, just making sure that this is yes, everything that nothing, nothing, nothing was changed. crossed out and added. This is Mr. Baker. It's all the same as the, the, it's the it's what was published. Thank you, correct, Nanette. Correct. Correct. Thank you, Council President. Ms. Barrett, can you pull the call on? Councilman McAvoy. Yes. Councilman Spadafino. Yes. Councilwoman Sullivan. Yes. Councilman Wendell. Yes. Council President Stanley. Yes. Moving forward with the reports for our mayor today. Thank you, Council President. First, I'd like to, I know it's on your schedule and your agenda for this evening, but I would like to um, formally uh, congratulate 
um, Lieutenant Frank Lasacco, who will be coming after your vote, uh, our new Chief of Police Effective August 1st of this year. Um, he inherits an excellent police department. We expect that it should stay that way and get even better. Um, and, uh, and we can only wish you the most success possible in your future endeavors as chief. And I'd also like to take the opportunity to uh, formally express our gratitude, my gratitude, hopefully the council's also, to Chief Conroy for his years of service to the township and for making the police department the department that is the envy of all of Middlesex County. I also want to remind people we have uh, a program that we're starting for the first time this summer, uh, Summer Stage Under the Stars, which is our version of Plays in the Park. Uh, they have 50 years on us, so we have to give us a little bit of a, of a chance to try to get the kinks out of the system, but we're going to be putting on Footloose as a pilot. Uh, it's going to be the last Thursday, Friday, Saturday of July, and the first Thursday, Friday, Saturday night in August. And we just hope that everybody will come out and enjoy. You can go on to the Playhouse 22 website and reserve tickets, which is something that you actually can't do at Playhouse, that you have to go in person to buy tickets. You'll still be able to go in person and buy the tickets here, too, but you can order them in advance. Um, we also have our 4th of July um, program coming up the 4th of July and uh, with fireworks and an entire day's worth of events so again open to the public and we would like everybody to get out there and finally I'd like to remind people um, especially those who are seniors about the senior freeze program um, it's something that I always like to bring up especially as we get to the time of year when new tax bills go out and everyone starts to freak out about their tax bill but for seniors who make the value changes each year but right now I believe it's about $87,000 as your family family income if you make that or under, you can apply for a senior freeze which will cap your taxes at the age of anybody over 65. Once you're capped, they will no longer be charged anything above that. You will have to pay the taxes, but the state uh, then reimburses you the difference. And uh, according to the budget plan as it's presented so far in the state uh, legislature, it looks like every intention is to keep that program fully funded. So I encourage any senior that meets those uh, criterion to uh, call the township and we will help them through that process. I think that, that is it, Mr. Council President. Thank, Thank you, you, Mayor. Thank you very much. From our town administrator? Uh, yes, I just want to give an update on the tables for the room. We're still searching for the right fit that would meet the needs of the council, uh, the planning board, zoning board, and the municipal court. I didn't want you to think that we forgot about it. Um, so I just wanted to give you an update on that. Second, I wanted to uh, wish Council President Sterling Stanley a happy birthday today. Hey. And uh, many more. Thank, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank, thank you, Council President. Uh, I've got some sad news uh, for us. Uh, East Brunswick lost one of its finest uh, this past weekend, uh, Jim Newmeyer, who uh, some of the old timers up here on the Council, and maybe uh, uh, Lieutenant Lacasio, will remember him. He was one of East Brunswick's first full time police officers. If you look at the black and white photos out in the hall, you'll see 1950, 53, and 54. He's the, the tall, handsome guy with a square head smiling in the middle of the pictures. Uh, he rose from uh, patrolman all the way up to be deputy chief. And uh, uh, he was part of the Newmeyer family that occupied almost an entire street uh, in my neighborhood. I grew up with some of his kids and with his nieces and nephews. Um, he was a consummate professional. I, it went from him keeping us out of trouble when we were kids to when he was deputy chief and I was a councilman negotiating budget items with him. He was a, a consummate professional um, and a uh, policeman's policeman and uh, a true old school gentleman. And my condolences to his wife and his, his five daughters. Yeah, five daughters. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Uh, any report from our clerk? Uh, yes, I've been asked to remind residents about yard sale signs. This is the season. Uh, please remember that yard sale signs are not to be posted to poles, uh, 
there to be a freestanding sign similar to like a political sign and in the ground and they need to be removed at least two days after the yard sale. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you. Any reports from our council members? Heard everything from yes. Mr. Hughes. I got nothing. All right. Seeing now, I'm going to close that portion. Moving on to the public portion. I want to remind everybody, please, if you got to make a statement, you can come up to the podium. Please state, please state your name and address and limit your comments to five minutes and address all comments to the chair. Thank you. Anyone from the public wishing to speak? Seeing none, I will close the public portion. Moving on to the consent agenda. Is there any portion of the consent agenda that council wishes to separate? Uh, council C. Spatifino. C? Anything else? Councilman McAvoy? A, E, and F. A, E, and F. Okay. And, and Councilman McAvoy, did you want them separated or just an explanation of them before we voted on block? An, an explanation will suffice, and uh, I do believe we can Combine C and F if you if you want to, and A and A and E. The one is uh, on shared services, mm -hmm. and one is on water. Clarification for the public is fine. Absolutely. And that would be uh, fine with me as far as C also. Uh, okay. More of an explanation of what this item is. Great. Happy to take a, a run at that. Uh, a and E deal with our uh, arrangements with the school board over. Uh, the course of the past several decades, this, the township, because it has a better tax rating, has been um, uh, floating bonds for the ta for the school board because we, it costs the taxpayers less, it saves money, and the school board signs an agreement, which is E, um, to pay us back. Uh, a is just a, a schedule of the payments that we make to the school board because we collect the money for the uh, Board of Education and disperse it throughout the year. With regard to C and F, they deal with water. C it authorizes an agreement with a co-op uh, from uh, Passaic County uh, to allow uh, East Brunswick and other municipalities and counties to pool their buying power. And it involves things like pipes and equipment that might not be available for uh, from the local plumbing supply, but could be available for major water projects. Uh, and we get a better price by doing that. And uh, F is uh, just an extension of the water supply agreement. Uh, the New Jersey Water Supply Authority, in essence, owns all the water in the state and allocates to everyone uh, who is a uh, municipality or other water purchaser their allocation. And this is renewing our long-term allocation agreement uh, through 2048 so that we have uh, access to uh, satisfactory supply of water. The warning sign that the red flag that went up for me was the was the 2048, and as um, we follow the privatization of water over in Edison Township, and they were looking for a 40-year agreement for privatization of water from this Suez LLC. This is not something that our Co community sh has to be alarmed about regarding privatization of water in our Correct, township. Correct, Councilman. This is our agreement with the New Jersey Water Supply Authority so that we have access and control uh, to our water. Thank you. Any other questions? Mayor. Mayor. I just wanted to um, reiterate that the public is aware that when you look at financial data for the township, which many people do, uh, two-thirds of the township's debt is the shared service arrangements agreements that we have with the township board of education uh, which is one of the reasons why we have always and have traditionally been able to get such high ratings from the bonding agencies because our debt ratio is actually quite low if you take out the fact that the bulk of it is actually to help the schools funding <clears throat> by using our great uh, credit rating uh, to get really very good rates and then, if I may, Council President, this is this is simply no. I take that back. This is not simply. This is a comprehensive move on the part of the, the mayor to ensure that shared services really works in our community and taxes are stabilized. Thank you, Mayor Cohn. Thank you. Thank you, Councilman. 
May I get a motion from for items A through J? Motion approved. Motion by Councilman Wendell. Second, Second. by Councilman Spadafino. Ms. Perkins, call Councilman roll. McAvoy? Yes. Councilman Spadafino? Yes. Councilwoman Sullivan? Yes. Councilman Wendell? Yes. Council President Stanley? Yes. Moving on to ordinances requiring a public hearing date of July 8, 2019. Can I get a motion for the following ordinance 19-18 to amend and supplement the revised general ordinances of East Brunswick Township, County of Middlesex, State of New Jersey, amending Chapter 3, Section 80, Compensation Retainer and Non-Retainer Services of the revised general ordinances of the East Brunswick Township. Motion approved. Motion by Councilman Wendell. Second. Second by Councilman McAvoy. Council President, this is just a an updating of a uh, ordinance that hasn't really been changed much in over 25 years. It's an attempt to bring it current with the practices in the other communities surrounding us. Thank you. Mr. Baker. Ms. Perry, please call the roll. Councilman McAvoy? Yes. Councilman Spadafino? Yes. Councilwoman Sullivan? Yes. Councilman Wendell? Yes. Council President Stanley? Yes. May I get a motion for the following ordinance 19-19, authorizing the granting of a long-term tax exemption and the execution of a financial agreement with 39 Edgeboro Road Urban Renewal LLC regarding Block 834, Lot 34.11, 39 Edgeboro Road. Motion approved. Motion by Councilman Wendell. Second, Second. by Councilman Spadafino. Any discussion? I'm happy to update the uh, council members and the public. This is the first time that this governing body, and it's as presently constituted, would be approving what is known as a, commonly as a pilot agreement, payment in lieu of, of taxes. Um, it's being done in just about every town that I'm aware of, particularly with, a lot, with regard to large uh, warehouses in order for towns to compete for business and for rateables. Uh, it's a uh, pretty much a requirement of how business is done today in the state of uh, New Jersey. This relates to the uh, half million square foot uh, plus or minus warehouse on 39 Edgeboro Road, which is part of the redevelopment area. Uh, under the uh, pilot arrangement, the uh, project would pay less taxes than as regularly taxed, but more taxes than as currently taxed, several hundred thousand because it's a very small building on a on a lot currently. Mm -hmm. The revenues from this starting at about seven hundred and fifty thousand dollars a year, if you can believe that from one building. Uh, Councilman Spadafino and I were talking about that today. It's an amazing amount of taxes uh, uh, from one building. The the base would never be lower than seven hundred and forty four thousand dollars and it escalates over time which not every town does, but we do in terms of our negotiations here, uh, would escalate at the end of the 30-year period to about a million and a half dollars a year um, in taxes. The municipality keeps 95% of the revenue, and the school, uh, the county gets 5% of the revenue. Now, the school board is not left out. The developer still pays land taxes. Uh, those land taxes are allocated the way that taxes are with the school board getting about 60 uh, some percent of it in the town and the county uh, sharing the, uh, the remainder. Um, so if there are any specific questions, I'm happy to go into, into further details. The uh, two things in, in discussing this with uh, uh, Councilman Wendell just before the meeting, on the schedule that's attached, which we probably will sim uh, simplify, uh, when we uh, have to sign the contract, there's a, a note that says 2% administrative fee to the township. Um, the, the redevelopment agency has requested that that 2% fee, about 14000 a year, go to the redevelopment agency in order to help fund the redevelopment agency. That's 14000 less than that, that they have to ask you for in each budget cycle. So that would be a suggested uh, uh, revision to the uh, schedule. And the other is that uh, we're very close, I think, to a uh, negotiating of a redevelopment agreement with Mr. Hughes's effort and with counsel for the redevelopment agency. And uh, Councilman Wendell suggested that the uh, language be added to the financial agreement that says it will become effective upon the execution of a redevelopment agreement so that we don't get the pilot 
out in front of the redevelopment agreement and we keep the two tied together. Any questions? Councilman McElroy? I'd like to go on record uh, thanking our attorney for his professionalism with regard to land use litigation. I feel that he is an expert in this area and um, all of the work that you put in to get this completed, Mr. Baker. Thank you very much. Council President. Thank you. Thank you, Councilman. Okay. Sorry, please call the room. Councilman McAvoy. Yes. Councilman Spadafina. Yes. Councilwoman Sullivan. Yes. Councilman Wendell. Yes. Council President Stanley. Yes. Moving on to Ordinance 19-20, can I get a motion for the following? Providing of various school capital improvements in and by the Township of East Brunswick in the County of Middlesex, New Jersey, pursuant to the shared service agreements with the East Brunswick Board of Education, appropriating 16,600,000 thereof, and authorizing Actually, the issuance. 14, I'm sorry. 14? It's 14 yeah. million, 600,000. 14 million? Mm-hmm. Okay. Appropriating. 14,600,000 there <laughs> off and authorizing the issuance of 13,870,000 bonds or notes of the township of, to finance part of the cost thereof. Can I get a motion? Motion adopted. Motion by Councilman Wendell. Second. Second. Second by Councilman Spadafino. This, this is a, a bond ordinance as we discussed earlier to help out the school system uh, with their capital improvements to uh, many of their facilities. A lot of the improvements will be at Churchill uh, Junior High School and including some work at the actual high school itself on the sports lighting and so on on the, on the athletic fields and also some security systems. So this is the first reading for the bond ordinance. So once it's passed, they can go out and actually um, purchase these products and so on, and we can do the financing for them. Great. Thank you, sir. As far as any questions? The mayor has a question. Mayor. Yeah, I also wanted to add, in addition with the uh, bonding that we've been doing for the school, helping them out, they've generally been five-year notes, and they pay their bonds back in five years, and so it becomes a... Um, revolving type, almost like a revolving line of credit, mm -hmm. because as they retire debt, they replace it. So um, we're almost acting like an intermediary for or for the bank, really, mm -hmm. for them. Yes. But um, we obviously have the collateral. You have the money that we pay them every single uh, month that uh, if we ever didn't have them pay back, we just take it from what we're supposed to be giving them. So it actually uh, is a very uh, good relationship, and um, but it's not bonds that we're carrying out 20, 30 years. They're they're generally um, and have consistently been five-year notes. Thank you, Mayor Cohn, and that, and that you know if, if a red flag went up on a couple of years. With regard to Mr. Hughes, once again, when we talk about millions of dollars, 16 million, no, it's 14 million. We throw, we throw, we throw around sometimes uh, money like, like it's a monopoly game, but you clarified for the community exactly what they needed to hear, that it is a, a five-year note and it will be paid in full bef before another one of these Correct. appears before us to... Uh, coining your words, help them out, um, helping out the community as a whole, um, because this is another example of how the two governing bodies work together. I think Thank it's you, uh, they calculated it at one point, saves the taxpayers somewhere around $200,000 a year just in financing costs, mm. and that's over a tax point, so it's, it is not insignificant. So. Mm -hmm. That's important. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Ms. Perry, please call the roll. Councilman McAvoy? Yes. Councilman Spadafino? Yes. Councilwoman <clears throat> Sullivan? Yes. Councilman Wendell? Yes. Council President Stanley? Yes. Moving on to the good of the cause. Does anyone have anything for the good of the cause? Get a motion to go and go. I'll make a line. Yes. Right. When is the uh, monument? The what? Week. The monument at um, the... Oh, yes. There's a tribute tomorrow evening, 7 o'clock, at the Community Arts Center for the 11 victims of the Tree of Life 
uh, killing in P Pittsburgh about six months ago now, and um, that is a uh, combination of uh, the township contributing trees in honor of the 11 victims, and then the four uh, shuls in town who have de who have uh, contributed to a monument that'll be placed uh, on the on the grounds outside of the community arts center, uh, and uh, that. Tribute will be tomorrow at seven o'clock, and uh, and an unveiling of that monument. Thanks for reminding me, Council yes. President. I, I beg your pardon. Were we in the good of the cause? Yeah, we're still in the good of the cause. Okay. Anyone else? Okay. I guess. Yeah, I, yeah, I do. Um, the first shout out is for our crossing guards. I had the habit of uh, this past week. Because of my professional retirement, I have a lot of time on my hands, so I uh, <laughs> made my way as a representative of this governing body to a number of crossing guards and personally just gave them a shout out to say how thankful we, uh, we were keeping our children safe, because that's what they do. And um, I don't know that they, that, that they hear it enough, but as they go on vacation for uh, the summer, they can get uh, recharged. For, for September. Um, as many of you know, and some are now learning, this past week we lost one of the greatest teachers in the entirety of East Brunswick High School, Mr. John Calamano. I had the pleasure of working with Cal, as he was affectionately and professionally known, and knew him outside the boundaries of the school on the hilltop. John would often quote Emerson, and now I have a quote for you, Cal. To leave the world a bit better, whether it be a healthy child, a garden patch, or a redeemed social condition, to know that even one life has breathed easier because of you, know that you have succeeded. Thank you, Council President. Thank you, Councilman. I'm Mark. I don't know what's going on today. I'm stuck it's today. Your birthday. <laughs> getting older. You're older. <laughs> I don't know what's going on today. Getting a little foggy in your old age, huh? <laughs> getting older there. <laughs> you need a motion to go into closed? Yes. Okay. Yes. Can I get a motion? I need a motion to go into closed session. Closed session for Second. a contract and personal matters. Second. Action will be taken after the closed session. You need a motion. Motion. Second. Second. Yep. We go into closed session. Okay. Can I get a motion for the following 16634 resolution authorizing the execution of an employment contract with Frank Saka to serve as the township police chief? Motion to adopt. Second. A little, can we have some discussion real quick? I just no. got something to say. Um, listen, I, I've known Frank for the better part of 25 or 30 years. Um, and I will say, I don't know if this is, if this is uh, you know, something that, that's actually making history here, but I don't know if he's the first officer ever that's graduated from uh, East Brunswick High School to be promoted to chief. But uh, I'm proud to say that, that our new chief, and, and thank, you know, our, great, our, our chief currently built a nice department, but I'm proud to know and, and have comfort in the fact that our chief is a graduate of East Brunswick High School, is a resident of East Brunswick, and he's a true green and white guy. So, <laughs> go Bears. There you go. <laughs> okay. okay. Councilman McAvoy? Yes. Councilman Spadafino? Yes. Councilwoman Sullivan? Yes. Councilman Wendell? Yes. Council President Stanley? Yes. Congratulations. Congratulations. No. Was that a yes? No, I have new business. Oh, huh? where are you from? Oh. New business. Okay, go for it. Uh, I've been uh, following certain things in the uh, news lately and also around the state. And uh, I believe that it's time to open a dialogue here on eliminating the uh, use of un unrecyclable plastics in the township, uh, especially plastic bags. Many of us have had many experiences. Every year I'm cleaning out 
the uh, leaves from under my shrubs, and there's plastic bags. And I look around the trees around town, and floating like ghosts in the wind, there's plastic bags. And before Memorial Day, when there was very few people around, uh, my wife and I went walking on the boardwalk down at Seaside Park, went out and sat on the beach. It was a beautiful day. And here were plastic bags rolling along like tumbleweeds. And I'm saying to myself, if this is how it is now, and we don't do something to put a stop to this, then 20 years from now, when I may be gone, these bags are going to just multiply like uh, jellyfish. And also what they're doing to the environment, I think, is a travesty. And I think that there's better alternatives. There's things that can be done. And a lot of towns are stepping up to try to send the message to the state that we want something done wholesale in the state of New Jersey for the betterment of the population in the future. Right now, there's 17 municipalities that have passed ordinances to uh, control the use of uh, single-use plastics. Uh, the whole county of Atlantic County has made an ordinance to uh, ban single-use plastics. And there are 12 municipalities that have pending ordinances. The closest one, Highland Park, has passed an ordinance controlling single-use plastics. Uh, some people say that the use of those plastics is necessary because it saves trees, but that's not really true. Everyone knows that a lot of paper bags are made from recycled uh, wood. Uh, also, it has become uh, very well known that uh, a, a use for hemp plants is to be able to uh, utilize those plants in order to make paper bags and that they are a renewable source and also that they produce 25% more oxygen per acre than an acre of trees. So those people that think we need plastic uh, bags are terribly wrong. Also, uh, the thing about it is that East Brunswick's always been on the cutting edge of health and environmental issues. And I think that it's very important that we follow through and be a strong voice to send a message to a state to let them know that we need a statewide control of single-use plastics. Thank you. Yeah. Councilman, I wanted to thank you for bringing that up. It actually has been an issue that we have been working on and was one of the main reasons, actually, that uh, I had requested volunteers in the town to be part of a sustainability committee. The sustainability committee is, is basically a subcommittee of our environmental commission. And their role is to help implement any of the projects that would help provide us an opportunity to move up on the sustainable New Jersey uh, op, uh, list of, of, of ways to uh, provide the type of environment that you're talking about. And they get points for a whole bunch of different categories, but among them, are things like eliminating single-use plastic bags, styrofoam, uh, straws. plastic straws. So the committee has been meeting, and they actually are in the process of helping us towards putting together three ordinances, which we will be bringing to the council within the next couple of weeks. And they are for those three specific areas, single-use plastic bags, for plastic straws, and for styrofoam. Uh, it was actually even further proof that we were in the right direction when I had two fifth grade girls write me letters from Warnsdorfer who were complaining that in the school system they're learning about recycling and about sustainability and about being good uh, caretakers of the earth and yet they stare at the garbage right at Warnsdorfer where they threw out the styrofoam uh, containers that they had and the and the plastic utensils that they have and and they just couldn't understand how hypocritical it was that the schools who are teaching them how to be good stewards of the earth are actually some of the biggest polluters and that what they could do to try to help um, move them in the right direction so if the fifth graders even see it then it, it, it's we, we need to do something it's their um, future that's at stake so we have every intention of bringing 
to the council those three ordinances and what we've actually asked the uh, sustainability committee to do is that in advance of bringing any type of ordinance to the council they need to accomplish two things with those ordinances one they need to provide <coughs> all of the opposition research because the minute you start talking about banning anything you have people all of a sudden coming out of the woodwork <coughs> saying how paper bags are just as bad and uh, all the car companies that say that uh, that the electric cars are using just as much carbon emissions as and it's just not true and so at some point it becomes fake news and we really need to be able to provide the opposition research to combat that before people start coming out and, and complaining that we're on the wrong track. And the second thing that they need to do is they need to provide to the businesses, the restaurants, the stores in the community who will be affected the most by that, uh, an opportunity to educate them on alternatives that they could be utilizing. Many of the big stores already operate in, d in different parts of the country. They already have had to deal with these type of ordinances in those towns, so they already know what to do. Um, many restaurants um, just need to be given advice on places and alternatives that they could purchase products that they could give out that is biodegradable. And it's an opportunity for them to use up some of the stock that they already have uh, that they've already paid for so it wouldn't be fair to ask them to take a, a hit uh, on, on the stock they've already ordered so there would have to be a period of time before which it would be um, implemented but there has to be a point in time where once you hit that point um, it, the, the the ordinance is in place and there's a penalty for not following it uh, and I agree I think that over time enough communities start doing it then either other communities will voluntarily do it or the state will just come in and make it a mandate for the entire state but um, but I didn't want you to think uh, since you were on that track that we haven't already started addressing the issue and I expect very soon uh, for this council to be uh, looking at some of those ordinances and trying to see if it's something that we could implement right here in East Brunswick and do exactly what you said to be the town that's on the leading edge of change instead of the follower. I'll be looking forward to it. Thank, Thank you. you. May I have a question for you? Um, as far as research is concerned, is the committee researching into towns that have already established these orders? Yes, we'll and be. What, what they, have, they have done. In, 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 as far as the businesses are concerned, how they approach the businesses and how what kind of leeway. Yeah, that's happen. why we didn't want to come in and have a an ordinance for you to just say yes to. We want to make sure that the. Uh, business community in town that we very much support um, is on board. They have uh, educational opportunities, chances to work on and learn what alternatives are available. And, um, and that's the things that I really needed this committee to be working on. There's a million different ordinances that we could pick from. That's not the hard work. The hard work is doing the research on the opposition and being ready for it, because it will come and to prepare uh, businesses in a uh, business-friendly manner so that they can have every opportunity to, to uh, alter uh, their op uh, uh, all their, their choices and make it so that they can find it very easy to comply. And if there are any residents who wish to add their thoughts or maybe help out committee how would they go about they can contact the mayor's office and we'd be more than happy to to allow them to serve on the sustainability committee thank you thanks Mike, motion good. To motion to okay second second all in favor, in favor? All, right. All, right. all right have a good night everybody